I remember back in the day when I used to suffer from extreme anxiety, I would actually get nervous about leaving the house to interact with other people until I realized that GABA was the predominant neurotransmitter that modulates anxiety and nervousness. And then I started playing around with a range of nootropics and supplements that target the GABA system. And all of a sudden socializing became absolutely effortless. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is take a look at the benefits of Stressam or Etifoxine as a powerful anti-anxiety nootropic. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Boost Your Biology. And if you've been enjoying these videos, please hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest and greatest health research. So what is Stressam or Etifoxine? Well, Stressam is an anxiolytic drug manufactured by the French company Biocodex. Now, this drug is approved in more than 40 countries and its active substance is called etifoxine. Now, etifoxine is a benzoaxine derivative and it is characterized by maximum selectivity and physiological action. Now, the active substance was developed in the 1960s by the German pharmaceutical company. Back then, benzodiazepines such as diazepam, oxazepam, phenazepam, which are psychoactive substances with sedative effects, dominated the market. However, it is a well-known fact that tranquilizers of the benzodiazepine structure have significant side effects. And if you have personally used some of these medications, please drop your experience down below. Have you had major side effects from benzo uh, benzodiazepine drugs? Please leave a comment down below. Now, etifoxine was one of the several anxiolytics with enough potential to replace these benzodiazepine drugs. Now, the compound produces neurosteroids in the brain that can indirectly modulate the activity of the GABA-A response. Now, enhancing neurosteroids in the brain has a lot of potential in keeping the function or keeping the functional yet calm state of body and mind. So bear in mind, if you do want to purchase Edifoxine or Stressam, you will see that linked down below in the video description if you do want to look into Stressam for research purposes only. So a little bit more about Edifoxine. If we take a look at the key benefits of Edifoxine, the drug effectively eliminates manifestations of anxiety, fear, stress, discomfort, insomnia, and inattention. Now, etifoxine does not have a withdrawal syndrome and does not cause dependence. Hence, it can be of interest to narcologists. Now, Stressam has shown its effectiveness in the reduction of manifestation of alcohol withdrawal, tremors, and proximal sweating. Also, Stressam helps to produce the uh, pathological craving for alcohol, improving the quality of life in the post-withdrawal period. Now, some state that Stressam may also exhibit nootropic benefits like improvement in concentration and memory functions. And this is uh, basically attributed to the fact that uh, Stressam is said to stimulate mitochondrial benzodiazepine receptors, thereby enhancing the synthesis of neurosteroids. Now, another property of Stressam that has been recently discovered is neuroprotection. Now, Stressam was shown to promote neuron growth in particular, it accelerates axonal regeneration and may serve as a treatment for polyneuropathy. Now, Stressam was also proven to have the ability to alleviate mild depression. However, Stressam is not an antidepressant. Stressam also has an indirect effect on the course of cardiovascular, pulmonary, gastroenterological, and other psychosomatic diseases. So now you're probably wondering, how does etifoxine possess such a potent anti-anxiety effect? Well, etifoxine produces its anxiolytic effects by a dual mode of action, including direct positive allosteric modulation of the GABA-A receptor complex, and by stimulating the synthesis of three alpha-reduced neurosteroids, the most potent endogenous allosteric modulators of GABA-A receptor function. Now, this dual mechanism causes an overall inhibitory effect on neurotransmission. Although the inhibitory effect produced is similar to that of benzodiazepines, etifoxine is acting at a different target site, such as the beta-2 and beta-3 subunits of the GABA-A receptor complex. Moreover, it also targets the mitochondrial TSPO, thereby leading to neurosteroid-mediated potentiation of GABA-A receptors. Now, emerging data from the literature also suggests that 
Edifoxine possesses neuroprotective, neuroleptic, and anti-inflammatory properties. So we can see here Edifoxine working on that TSPO binding site and affecting the synthesis of the neurosteroid allopregnenolone. And many of you will probably know about this neurosteroid. Allopregnenolone is lowered in uh, individuals that take various 5-alpha reductase inhibitors or various hair loss drugs. Um, they can actually lower the synthesis of allopregnenolone. And so we can see here that Edifoxine seems to boost the synthesis of allopregnenolone, a very powerful anti-anxiety neurosteroid in the brain. So we can see here the different binding sites, how it affects the mitochondria and altering the GABA binding site and affecting GABA-A transmission. Hey guys, if you're watching this video right now and want to unlock your full mental and physical potential, then the Limitless course is for you. Unlock my best biohacks for energy, motivation, and testosterone optimization so that you can conquer your goals with ease and crush every day with confidence. Click the link in the description and get it now for only $27 today. All right, now let's get straight back into the video. So here's a wide snapshot of the research on Edifoxine. The first study here was titled, A Double Blind Parallel Group Placebo Controlled Comparison of Sedative and Mnesic Effects of Edifoxine and Lorazepam in Healthy Subjects. The next study here was titled, The Modulatory Effects of the Anxiolytic Edifoxine on GABA-A Receptors are Mediated by the Better Subunits. The next study here was titled Efficacy of Edifoxine compared to Lorazepam Monotherapy in the Treatment of Patients with Adjustment Disorders with Anxiety, a double-blind controlled study in general practice. The next study here was titled Neurosteroid Allopregnenolone Mediates Anxiolytic Effect of Edifoxine in Rats. Next study here, Edifoxine Improves Peripheral Nerve Regeneration and Functional Recovery. Number seven, we're looking at Edifoxine promotes glial-derived neurotrophic factor-induced neurite outgrowth in PC12 cells. Next one, Edifoxine stimulates allopregnenolone synthesis in the spinal cord to produce analgesia in experimental mononeuropathy. The next study here was titled Edifoxine for Pain Patients with Anxiety. The next study, number two here, looking at the non Benzodiazepine anxiolytic drug Edifoxine causes a rapid receptor-independent stimulation of neurosteroid biosynthesis. The next study here was titled Edifoxine versus Alprazolam for the treatment of adjustment disorder with anxiety, a randomized controlled trial. Edifoxine improves sensorimotor deficits and reduces glial activation, neuronal degeneration, and neuroinflammation in a rat model of traumatic brain injury. And we can see all of the other studies listed down here below. So if you do want to dive deep into the studies, you will see that linked down below in the video description. Um, you'll see a link to click on the Edifoxine page and you'll see all of the research papers linked on that product page there. So what have people said about Edifoxine? Well, this person said, and obviously this is N equals one. So please do not take this as a strong form of evidence. I do, however, want to capture what people what real humans have said, not rats, what real humans have said about the use of edifoxine. So this person's uh, title was one week on 100 milligrams daily of edifoxine. So he said, edifoxine needs some days to start working. I'm not sure if it's as strong as benzodiazepine like uh, clinicals proved um, versus Xanax or lorazepam, but my anxiety is almost completely disappeared. I managed to speak to a lot of girls in the last three days. I've just done an exam in which I was even too calm. Not sure if cognition is at 100% like it should, just wow. There is literally zero history of uh, edifoxine abuse, no history of withdrawal side effects, except one case in one trial in which it caused rebound anxiety, and I have zero desire to take it outside social settings since it does not cause any pleasure or life is good feeling. It should not cause tolerance, but I'll report the next weekend if I felt the need of rising the dose. I'm even taking an estrogen blocker, which should rise neurosteroids production of only precursor of testosterone. So that's really interesting to see that person's experience with edifoxine. The next comment that I found about edifoxine, again, a very poor form of evidence, but it does give us 
an insight into how the drug feels. Now, this person said, in my opinion, it's a decent anxiolytic. It's definitely not as good as any benzo, at least at 50 milligrams or 150 milligrams over the course of a day, but it was definitely useful in tapering off of benzos and similar, mainly as someone to take the edge of once you finally jump from a low dose. I didn't feel like it could completely take me out of even moderate withdrawal, but in my experience, it can certainly ease mild symptoms. The next person said, so I finished off the Edifoxine three to four weeks ago. The effects were subtle, like 2.5 milligrams of Valium, non-sedating and possibly focus in increasing. I tried using the Edifoxine along with Mebicar and Tefizepam to combat stimulant-induced anxiety from Ritalin, and I was not too impressed by the results. So yeah, too, exp uh, too expensive to justify ordering again. If someone had uh, mild chronic anxiety, I would consider taking this over more debilitating addictive anxiolytics such as benzos, alcohol, VDCCs, GABA B agonists. Felt like L-theanine on steroids. So as far as what the manufacturers of the drug uh, discuss around the dosages, the usual course of treatment is one to two capsules two to three times a day from one week to two months. Now to choose a dose and duration of treatment, please refer to the official instructions and please be sure to call, uh, consult with your doctor or healthcare provider before taking any medications, supplements, or peptides. Um, so this is really important to note that this is obviously for informational purposes only. And if you have used Edifoxine, uh, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to get a discussion going. What was your experience with Edifoxine? please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, thanks so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.